Hey everyone, with it and Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures over the past year, you'll typically find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we've traveled through various different countries, we've noticed that a few things are different than what we're accustomed to in Canada and the UK. The reason that we made this channel in the first place is in the hopes of not just sharing our experiences of travel, but also hoping to inspire others to do the same. With that, then we wanted to make sure that for anybody who's wanting to replicate what we've done and go to similar places, then they are armed to the teeth with as much information as possible. With that, then we have laid out some tips and tricks for each of the countries that we have visited so far. Today's video is going to focus on Oman. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that we've traveled to Muscat, Nizwa, and multiple different wadis over our time there. Today's video is going to offer some pointers that are specific to each of the locations, while others are going to be more general about the country as a whole. We hope that you find these useful. While our time in the UAE helped us revert back a little bit to what we're accustomed to back home, Oman really was more along the lines of our experiences in other Middle Eastern countries, especially Jordan, I would say. So with that then, it is worth noting, the majority of Oman is predominantly cash-based. However, for places like supermarkets and hotels and other things, then it is possible to pay for those with card. That all said, it is therefore worth making sure that you do have some Omani currency on you at pretty much all times. Whether you're more comfortable buying that before you arrive, or you'd rather just get some at an ATM and there are multiple for you to use while you are in the country, it's up to you, but definitely make sure that you are prepared to pay with both. The water in Oman is not potable, meaning that you cannot drink the tap water. You should be buying bottled water. But again, like other countries, it's very affordable to do so because everyone needs to do so. However, you can use the water there to brush your teeth. As with the majority of other countries that we've been to in the Middle East, the toilet hose, aka the bum gun, is really the main method of sorting yourself out after the toilet. However, as with a lot of these other places that do take on Western tourists, then toilet paper is 100% available. You will just need to ask for it first. As with many of the other Muslim countries that we visited, places of worship are free. However, you need to make sure that you're dressed respectfully. Most of the time that just means covering your knees, shoulders, as well as your hair. However, there are some variances, so just make sure that you look online before you go to whatever tourist attraction you're going to to make sure that you're gonna be able to get in without a problem. Oman has some pretty stunning natural beauty. It has a huge coastline where you can go into some amazing water if you want to. But the main things that we really took in were the likes of the wadis and also being the sinkhole, all of which have some form of water available. It is possible to go swimming in practically any body of water that you see. However, there are a couple of things to bear in mind with some of the places that you're going to go. The first is we would 100% recommend that you make sure you take proper footwear with you if you are planning on visiting the Wadis or Bima sinkhole. Because in order to get to the water, it is highly likely that you are going to be walking on rocks. Some of those are going to be quite sharp and it's not going to be a comfortable experience for you without appropriate footwear. Another thing to bear in mind is that in a lot of these places, you're going to be sharing these bodies of water. If it's not going to be with other people, then it's going to be with fish. And some of these fish survive on eating dead skin off of other organisms. So, especially when it comes to the likes of being the sinkhole, then expect to get a fish spa for pretty much your entire body if you are planning on taking a dip. It is completely okay it does tickle a little bit, we can speak from experience, but it is actually very relaxing. Your skin will very rarely ever look better or feel better. So if you wanna go for something a little bit alternative and also free, then it is 100% worth giving a go. 
Getting from Muscat Airport to the city is really as simple as a bus. Two things that you should be aware of. The first is that you buy the ticket on the bus, which is why, as Nick said before, that it's helpful to have money, cash on you when you arrive. And the second thing you should know is that that particular bus route really only goes along one specific major street. So depending on how far away your accommodation is, you may choose to walk. However, just like the UAE, Oman is hot. Be prepared to sweat. So that might not be suitable. And the alternative is you can just take a taxi, which are readily available. As an addition to that, while Muscat is a beautiful city, it is also a massive sprawling city with no obvious city centre. While there are certain public transport connections, not least the airport bus, the main way that people get around is by car. With that then, unless you are going to be renting a car, you're going to be needing to use a rideshare app. Uber is not really a thing in Oman. They have their own nationwide app called Otaxi, but in terms of the economy that you get out of Otaxi, it is wonderful. We ended up using it multiple times and we had zero complaints. It was very, very good indeed. While we tried to use public transportation and taxis within Muscat, the best value for money for the rest of the country is definitely renting a car not least because there aren't really any public transportation options between cities. So if you want to leave Muscat, really the easiest way is to rent a car. That's what we did. The roads are absolutely lovely. They're kept up very well. And actually they're never too busy. However, if you want to go off the main highways, so into a desert or closer to a wadi, maybe do some camping, then Just a normal car will not suffice. You are definitely going to need a 4x4. Another great thing about Oman, and this was another reason why we loved it when we went, is that actually for all of the scenic places that we mentioned, so we're talking about Bima Sinkhole, the many wadis that we ended up going to, then it is worth noting that entrance to all of these is completely free. You do not have to pay a dime. And so that is really, really good news. However, when it comes to Wadi Shab, access from the parking lot to the main site is blocked by a river. And the only way that you can get over is with what they refer to as a ferry. This ferry is one real per person and it will take you across. It feels like a little bit of a false economy because it takes about two minutes to get over, but it is 100% necessary because that is literally the only way that you're going to get to the other side so that you can then walk through to the rock pools and enjoy a wonderful time there. And that's our complete list of tips and tricks that we have for Oman. We hope that you found them useful and that you can apply them to your own future travels. But we do recognize that this is not an exhaustive list of tips and tricks for the country. So if you've been there and have any suggestions or if you have questions about Oman, please leave a comment below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.